Good morning, and welcome to the Congregational Church of Austin, United Church of Christ. My name is Tom, and as we like to say in United Church of Christ, whoever you are and wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here with us. Now, if you are new to our church or our worship gathering, and if you have any questions about our church or our ministry, feel free to send us an email at the email address listed below. We are gathering in the season of Epiphany, and throughout the season of Epiphany, we will be lighting our Epiphany Christ candle. So I hope that you have a candle at home with you so that you can light your candle with us as we share the light and celebrate the light of Christ together. So as we continue with our worship, may the peace of Christ and the light of Christ be with you. This Sunday we once again light our Epiphany Christ candle. And as we do, let us reflect on the relationship between light and dark. Michel de Montaigne devoted much of his adult life to living in solitude and writing about his experience. He wrote in his essays, Astonishment is the foundation of all philosophy inquiry, the way it advances, and ignorance, its goal. Ignorance, its goal. We often attribute light to wisdom and darkness to ignorance. Philosophy should enlighten us. It should dispel the darkness, just as wisdom dispels ignorance. But Montaigne recognized that there is wisdom in darkness, just as there can be ignorance in light. Light can sometimes blind us to reality, leaving us in the dark, while darkness can be its own type of wisdom its own form of illumination. How often do we recognize that our enlightened view of reality, our wisdom, is actually distorted by ignorance? How often do we recognize that by acknowledging our ignorance, we are truly wise? May we embrace both light and dark, wisdom and ignorance. And may we be blessed with a deep appreciation for the relationship between the two.
Good morning. Our reading this morning comes from the first chapter of Mark, verses 40 through 45. Jesus cleanses a leper. A leper came to him, begging him and kneeling. He said to him, if you choose, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I do choose, be made clean. Immediately, the leprosy left him and he was made clean. After sternly warning him, he sent him away at once saying to him, see that you say nothing to anyone, but go. Show yourself to the priests and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded as a testimony to them. But he went out and began to proclaim it freely and to spread the word so that Jesus could no longer go into a town openly, but stayed out in the country. And people came to him from every quarter. On the surface, today's story seems pretty simple and straightforward. Jesus heals a leper. But in its original context, this story is actually quite a shocker. By writing this story, Mark is trying to shock people into rethinking the nature of reality itself and to challenge people to reorient their lives to a new reality, a reality Jesus is now revealing. Mark shocks and challenges by telling this story in which Jesus violates one of his people's core beliefs. That which is unclean must be kept separate from that which is clean. Because when the unclean comes into contact with the clean, the unclean infects the clean and makes the clean unclean. The clean doesn't clean the unclean. No, the unclean dirties the clean. To the people with whom Jesus lives, the people who raised Jesus, the people who taught Jesus what's what, how things are, right from wrong. This is a core fundamental belief. Everyone knows it's true. No one would think to question it. It's not up for discussion. It's what God says. It's reality. Keep the unclean separate from the clean. Guard the clean, protect the clean, because the unclean infects the clean. Lepers are unclean. Jesus touches a leper. What a shocker. Jesus violates this core belief by touching a leper. However, what's supposed to happen doesn't. And what shouldn't happen, does. The unclean does not contaminate the clean. The clean purifies the unclean. Jesus reverses the order. He reveals to people that what they believe to be true isn't. They have it backwards. It's as if Jesus says, hey folks, see the sun? The sun isn't going around the earth. The earth is going around the sun. Your understanding of reality is backwards. The clean should not remain separate from the unclean. It's the other way around. The clean should reach out and touch the unclean, to make the unclean well, to make the unclean healthy and whole, 
to restore, reconnect, and redeem the unclean. The clean should not guard and protect itself from the unclean. The clean should embrace the unclean. Now that's quite a shocker to people whose whole conception of reality is based on the core belief that the exact opposite is true. This is also a good illustration of the word repent, which is the very first thing Jesus tells people to do when he begins his public ministry. Repent. Turn around. Look at reality the other way and reorient your heart to a new way of seeing reality. I wonder how Jesus might shock us today by revealing to us that we are looking at reality backwards. What core belief of ours might Jesus expose as wrong? Even though we all know it's true, none of us question it, and it's not up for discussion. How might Jesus shock us today to rethink reality and challenge us to reorient our lives to a new reality. When Jesus touched the leper, he broke through the cultural barrier that separated the clean from the unclean. He did the same by entering the homes of so-called sinners, sitting at tables with them, rubbing shoulders with them, breaking bread with them, sharing a common cup with them. When Jesus joined his disciples around a table for his last meal, he broke through the spiritual barrier that separated him from them. This is my body, he said. Take and eat. This cup is my blood, he said. Receive it. Drink from it. I live in you, and you live in me, he said. We are not separate from one another. Living many lives, dying many deaths, always living still from generation to generation, we will never be separate from one another. To this day, we are not separate from one another. Christ lives in us, and together we live in Christ. We take this bread that he breaks with us and for us, and together we eat. We receive this cup, and together we drink. Christ lives in us, and together we live in Christ. May it always be so. Amen.
I'd like to thank you for your continued support of the Congregational Church of Austin, United Church of Christ. Because of the light of your generosity, the light of your love and care for this church, for one another, and for our ministry, we are able to continue on through this difficult time, being a Christ-like presence to one another, being a Christ-like presence in this world. So again, thank you for your generosity, for your love, for your continued support of the Congregational Church of Austin. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of life and the gift of new life that we receive through the living Christ. In response, we offer you these gifts and we offer you our very lives. And we pray that they may be transformed into ministry that brings your liberating, healing, reconciling love to your creation. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Sisters, brothers, kindred in Christ, may Christ's light shine within you and may it shine from you upon others. When others are feeling hatred or fear, may you love them. Where others are injured, may you bring a healing presence to them. When others are struggling with doubt, may you restore their trust. When others are suffering from despair, may you instill hope in them. When others are sad, may you bring them joy. May you shine in the darkness. May the darkness not overcome you. And may the darkness not overcome others because of the light of Christ that you shine upon them.